Okay, first of all, guys, I want to thank every one of you, all these new subscribers and stuff that's coming onto our channel and talking to us, interacting with us. Yes, we, thank you so much. We did not expect to get this much love from these videos. If we did, we would have made more. We probably would have never left England. But we do have <laughs> a lot of content coming up. Uh, the way we want to plan it before we got the stomach virus, this video was originally supposed to come out Wednesday. And our schedule is, is during the week, we want to drop a smaller video kind of something like this maybe we'll talk about and go over certain things ask you guys questions maybe you guys can fill it in in the comments to let us know like what we did wrong or what we didn't get right or your feelings about it or just cultural different stuff just small things like today is the pub uh also if you are not uh if if you are visiting england you're gonna to want to watch this video because we bring up some points that we didn't as americans or as a foreigner the the wires didn't connect and it's probably a mistake that you could make too that's you're gonna be like okay i did this wrong you know what i mean like yeah. i didn't think this through so or maybe something that you know there's a couple of things that you guys are definitely going to want to hear so uh at the beginning of this video it takes place right after we left Leiden Hall market we started exploring the city of london uh we go into a church and this is where some of our older uh subscribers or history buffs of london uh, we walked into a church of london and we see some stuff and we actually asked questions out loud not knowing that you guys were even going to be here but we said let's just keep it in this video and we will um see if they'll be able to answer the question of who what where and why and then we can do it so let's watch that you guys see it you guys know the answer of why let us know and uh and then we'll get to the pub and then when we get to the part where I completely mess up because I got so fat, I was so excited about the 60 toffee pudding that I really forgot to film it once I got there. Uh, we'll pick up from there. Ready? Like and subscribe. Let's go. How you doing? Are we allowed to be in here? <laughs> wow. Of the what? The pelican. Oh, wow. What's the pelican for? Representation of Christ. Shedding his blood for us all. It's amazing. Is this the Church of England? Yeah. This is beautiful. How old is it? Old. Old. 17s, and then it was rebuilt. A lot of the city of London churches, when you go around, you'll discover they were built. Yeah. And they were bombed, and then they were rebuilt. Wow. And bombed and rebuilt. Look at that pipe organ. That is insane. This is really giving me some... Uh... With the angels up in the corner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is like mahogany, but it has like, I feel like there's a symbol for everything. Like there's a meaning behind it. Like look at each, if, if somebody knows, just tell me, but why is there different shields on each, each pew? He said, uh, guys, this symbolizes the blood of Christ. It's a pelican with baby pelicans. I don't know what we're quite looking at, but it's a pelican. And I guess it's Jesus giving his blood. The old, the old church has got real morbid with stuff, you know? I feel like churches like that is just something you're just going to happen up here. Because how old is the city of London? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's not even, that was 200 years ago. Like the guy was saying, he said, the churches got bombed and got rebuilt, got burned down and got rebuilt. Like, I mean, how old is this stuff that we're looking at? I don't care what anybody says. If you buy the telephone booth, you got to get the cliche picture of the telephone booth. If you, if you don't get it, have you even been to London? I guess not. It's here. Okay, what do I do? I don't know, somebody busted the window out of it. Should we but go to the, yeah, let's not do that one. You can't even, 
You can't even go in that one. Broken. We'll find another one. It looks like they put a bunch of garbage in there. <laughs> but I heard that that's kind of the thing here in London. So you found a phone booth that didn't stink? No, it didn't. It didn't smell good, but it didn't smell terrible. Oh, okay. You got your phone booth picture. <laughs> okay. It's really intimidating walking up in this church because I don't know if you can see that or not. Right around this little, there's people there. To give you an idea of how big that is. So you gotta go up there. You're fine. <laughs> this is the Black Friar. This is where we're having dinner. This is a very unique building. It's built like a triangle. It's literally like a triangle. It's built into a bridge. You see that? A train bridge. That's insane. This is so cool. <laughs> A good thing is soon snatched up. Look at the... It's kind of like dark in here. Like you got the... I don't know. So you got the friars on the ceiling. Seize the occasion. Wisdom is rare. Silence is golden. You don't advertise it. Tell a gossip. Finery is foolery. Haste is slow. Industry is all. See, that fryer looks like a pig. But you have like out here, out front. Even the, it's like marble walls. And then you just have the standard pub outside. Let's see if we can go over the menu. I have it on the book sitting. That was fine. Hopefully you guys can read. So, this is my first British pint. <laughs> what do you call it? Howls or Hell? I don't know. I don't remember. I've officially drunk a pint in a pub. <laughs> How is it? Feels good. Tastes good. I'm not much of a beer person. So, I don't know how it's hoppy. There's barley, I'm assuming. <laughs> it's of a golden color. It has bubbles in it. And it's okay. I'm more interested in sticky toffee pudding and some bangers and mash. That's what I want. But I had to do that, obviously. <laughs> obviously, I had to do that. This, there's just a bunch of people at the bar right now. They just fit. So we got bangers and mash with onion gravy. This is delicious. And we got, what did you get? You got chicken schnitzel, garlic yep. butter on top. Let's try it with sauce. Good sauce? Yeah. That's good. It's a garlic aioli sauce. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's hot. You <laughs> can see the steam going off of it. It is really dark in here, guys. Like, really dark. Hot, but that was really good. Really good? Mm hmm. The outside of that is like super crunchy and crispy. Oh. You can probably hear me chewing it. And um, that sauce on top is great. Really? Yeah, it's really good. So I got the bangers and mash. This is a traditional um, English dish. It's got sausage, mashed potatoes, and an onion gravy. Okay, yeah, before we go any further, I hold my fork weird. I'm left-handed. I don't know what else to say. I'm in a world dominated by Ridey, and I'm sure Ridey has an opinion on it. Okay, let's get back to the video.
You can taste the wine. They use wine in that gravy, you can really taste it. Alright. Here's to the first meal in London. <laughs> Is it in smoke? That is very good. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's very good. The port. English bangers have a different taste than pork at home. It's herby, but in a different way than sausage at home. It's just, it almost like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just got more of a herbal taste to it, but it's also got like a cleaner taste to it. Is it strong? No. No, it's not stronger. It's not strong. I, I feel like, to be fair with you, I feel like, uh, I feel like our sausage in America is stronger and we're just used to it. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. This should taste more of the, try it. Is this, I can't see it. It's mashed potatoes. And what? The onion gravy. The banger. That's good. I'm really happy I ordered that. <laughs> I've been, I've been since like we've been going here. This has been like something that I've been really want to get is a proper bangers and mash and the and the sausage roll that we had this morning. Yeah, that was actually really good. <laughs> what? That was really good. The sausage roll. Mm -hmm. right, well, the sausage ain't overpowering, is it? No, it's actually good. All right, guys, we're gonna finish this off and then get some dessert. This is sticky toffee pudding with ice cream and custard. Tiffany is a fan of sticky toffee pudding. I am. But we've never had traditional sticky toffee pudding. We've had Harry Potter World sticky toffee pudding. Yeah, and I'm really excited for this. <laughs> okay, I want to take a picture of it on my phone first. Are you good? On my phone? Okay. All right, are you Okay, so you did not like that toffee pudding that much. It looked good. We had the ice cream and the custard. Yeah. Um, I've had it before to Harry Potter and Universal, and then we've made it a few times ourselves because we liked the one in Universal. And then when we got here, I was so, so excited to try it because I was like, okay, this is the real thing. Like, I really was so excited. But I personally did not like this one. It, to me, wasn't that sweet, and it had, like, a stronger date flavor yeah. and I was like extremely disappointed honestly um, but then we did end up going to other pubs throughout our trip and we we kept giving it a try and in a couple of the other pubs that we got it it was like delicious it was like exactly what I wanted it to be it was everything like I dreamed of it being yeah. it was sweet it was just delicious all the way around and I'm so glad that we did keep trying to eat it because I was disappointed in this yeah. first one. Yeah, the actual, the, the next time we tried it was actually in the donut the next day at the market. Yeah, place. and that was and really good. That one tasted more like what we thought it was gonna yeah. taste like. And I didn't mind it. it the, a couple of pubs that we went to, um, either was similar flavor to that. And there's a reason for that. Hold that thought, there's a reason for that. And maybe uh, somebody, this goes to our first question to our viewers who's gonna watch this. This is gonna be uh, one of the first questions about the pubs. But um, we went to a couple and it was different, but a lot of a lot of the pubs, it seemed like in London, really wanted to take the food to the next level. Yeah. We, we call it like gastro pub and stuff. And it's just a fancy word for bars who's taking it to the next level uh <laughs> as far as the culture of a pub if you're not a bar person in america that's not really going to make a make a difference as if you're going to like a pub or not in uh england uh first i want to kind of go over what happens when you walk into a pub so when you walk into a pub uh you're going to want to walk the the one that we went to blackfriars was a little bit different because they had an offset area to where you could set uh some have dining areas where they come to you uh, the first thing that you're, you do is like, let's say you're just sitting around that bar area at one of them tables. It, listen to this and commit this to memory because it's gonna make you not look very confused while you're uh, there. Uh, walk up to the bar uh, keep, say, look at the menu, get what everybody wants, 
walk up to the barkeep and say, hi, we're sitting at this table, this is what I want. And you name off the food to him or her or whoever, uh, you name, name that off and then you name off your drinks. In a, in a minute time, you say, please, while you're ordering, <laughs> like our commenters say, when you get done, say please and then say thank you. But then you pay for it right there on the spot and then you go to your table. They are gonna bring stuff to your table and they're gonna ask you a couple of basic questions. Do you want malt vinegar? Or do you want uh, brown sauce? Or do you want ketchup or anything like that? And you're gonna say yes or no. This concludes your interaction with the barkeep unless you want something else. They're really not gonna come back by and check on you. This is a pub setting. They're not gonna come back by and check on you. Uh, if you want another uh, beer, basically picture beer rules at a bar, even the food. You want something, walk up to the bar. They're going to order it for you. They know where you're setting. They'll mark it down and they will take care of it. As far as tipping and stuff like that, none of that is applied. Everybody's on a salary in England. So whatever it says on there is pretty much what the price is going to be. Uh, but that's typical etiquette for the pub. Now, the one thing that I was talking about with her was uh, we didn't take any much video inside the pub around the bar. We'll put pictures of what it looked like. It was very beautiful in there, but we wanted to stay in our own personal space Yeah. because there was a lot of people there and we don't want to be those people that's putting cameras in everybody's face mm -hmm. because it was five or six o'clock. People was just getting off of work and we don't want to be, hey y'all, <laughs> we're tourists <laughs> and vloggers, two of your favorite things, uh, <laughs> while they just got off of work. And so we didn't want to do that. So we kind of minded our own business. Here's some pictures of inside the pub. It was absolutely beautiful. We do suggest it. Now, the thing is about pubs in England, and this is what I want to bring up to some of our viewers. It seemed like a lot of them had a bunch of different facades and a bunch of different history but it seemed like it was all the same or only a couple of different companies own them. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're walking in and you would assume that this is, and this is just American being dumb. We would assume this is all American or just a privately owned pub and they're all doing their own thing. But you'll find that the vast majority of pubs in London is owned by two or three different companies. Yeah. And I found this out when I went to, um, when I went to the concierge, because we had Sunday roast in Oxford, get Sunday roast, that's the next point, hold on to that, we'll get to it. <laughs> so uh, I went to the concierge and they started naming off pubs because Sunday roast is only served at a certain time on Sunday, not different days. We're gonna get to it. But they started brainstorming, was like, okay, who serves Sunday roast? And they just started naming off these random names. And they're like, so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so and, and I'm like, okay, how does that work? And I realized they wasn't naming off pubs. Yeah, it wasn't the name of the pub. They was naming off uh, the actual owners of these pubs. Like, uh, I forget the one that was right next to our hotel. They said that that one served it, but they actually used to, but they don't anymore. Yeah. Um, they used to serve it pretty much all the time. And like, I realized like, okay, well, we're going to settle. We're probably not going to get a Sunday roast this late at night. So we decided to go to the pub. So I'm researching on my phone, you know, I'm going on my phone and I'm like, okay, let's see what the Blackfriar was. And it said the name of who owned the Blackfriar. And then she's like, well, I just want a sticky toffee pudding and a cider. Like, let's just go get a cider and sticky toffee pudding because she was obsessed with us. And okay, mm -hmm. so we're walking to this other pub and I'm looking up this other pub and I just go down to the bottom of the menu and this pub's right in the middle of London City. And I'm like, hold up, we can't go to this pub. And she said, why? And I said, because it's the same owners as the other pub. And the menu is exactly the same. They had the schnitzel on there that we ate and had everything else on the, there that we ate. And I was like, well, we can't go to this pub because it's probably going to taste exactly the same as the one you didn't like. So we actually just randomly found a different owner of a different pub or a different company and just went to that one. And it was different. Yeah, it was said, the, the one I preferred. It was the sweet, sweeter yeah. one. And their, their ice cream was a little weird. They did buffalo ice cream. Like, they was just trying to take it to us. I'm, yeah, I was in the same with that. But yeah. the... The sticky toffee pudding itself yeah. is really good. As far as the culture of the pub, very calm compared to what we would consider an American bar. Yeah. The closest thing that I could consider uh, is kind of a sports bar minus the sports. Yeah. It's a very different 
but that's probably the closest you could say. It's very relaxed, um, and it seems like people there are kind of more, have more morals. Yeah, everybody seems, in London, like they're more adult. Yeah. They have a little more common sense. Yeah, there's rules everywhere in America, and the thing is about the rules in America, you're like, why does America have so many rules? It's literally one of those rules is because somebody's done something for that rule to be in place. And everyone in America is too happy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everybody in America is very so happy. Oh, you were talking about people, uh, you were talking about people outside. Oh, yeah, like one thing I noticed was um, when you go to a pub, you kind of, when you're there to drink, you kind of just go in, order your drink and walk outside. And I think that's like really cool. Like in America, you really can't do that. If you have an alcoholic beverage, you have to stay inside. You're not allowed to walk outside and walk up and down freely with that drink. Um, unless there's like a designated, usually a smoking patio, then you kind of have to stay inside with your drink. It's not customary to walk up and down with your drinks or just walk outside freely. And usually if you are outside, there usually is some kind of security guard or someone watching just to make sure everybody's acting sensible, I guess, because in America, yeah. to the bars, they don't act as sensible. <laughs> yeah, well, and let's address the Americans real quick on this too. <laughs> By us saying that these bars are very calm and relaxing, we are not telling you every single bar in London is calm and relaxing. Mm -hmm. There's different places. We're saying on the whole, if you're in London, you're not gonna have an issue. If you go into a pub and wanna eat, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. We are not saying find the equivalent to the ghetto in London, <laughs> where there's different gangs, and go into that pub and be like, hey, they, they, uh, they're lying, this pub is dangerous. There is danger everywhere, Americans. There is danger everywhere. We're just assuming you're not gonna do that. Why, I don't know. Why, mm -hmm. I, don't, I have no idea. We're just, I don't know. Um, that's pretty much the, the pub scene. Uh, yeah, those, we really enjoyed the food. We're, that was one of the things that blew us away the most, is yeah. just how the food was good. We later on, a couple of things that we tried off camera, we did try a steak and ale pie. <laughs> I could, I wish I could bust open that steak and ale pie, crawl into it, pull the mashed potato up beside me, and <laughs> yeah. just go to sleep. Yeah. I mean, that was that was like the epitome of comfort. Food. Yeah. I loved it. Especially when it was so cold over there. It was like, yeah. it was just this so Sunday roast, real quick. Sunday roast is Sunday between 12 and 4. You're not going to get a Sunday roast and say, oh, there's a Toby's Carvery, which is a restaurant that serves Sunday roast all days of the week. Yeah. It is miles. You are going to have to dedicate a day to go to Toby's Carvery. So don't consider that. Don't think that you're going to, unless you want to make a day fully dedicated to eating a Sunday roast, multiple train changes, multiple, you might have to take an Uber. You're talking about a minimum of probably an hour out of your way of anywhere touristy. There is not Toby's Carvery. This is not America. And Sunday roasts are only served in pubs for a few hours on Sunday, Monday through Tuesday or uh, Monday through Saturday. It is not a thing. Yeah. Now I know English people's probably looking saying, well, of course that's not a thing. It's called a Sunday roast. We eat ice cream Sundays. We have taco Tuesday. Everything in America is named after days and we eat them every day. So that is a brand new idea to us. Yeah. And part of the things that we like and dislike about London, we're going to talk about and that kind of plays into it. Mm -hmm. It's not the terrible thing, but we are going to talk about it. All right, guys. If you also, if you, if you think it is extremely worth us trying to get to Toby's Carvery, then let us know. And it, when we go back to London, we will make it a day that we really get there. If you guys say it's worth it. Oh, yeah. And another thing, too. Everybody's saying that we don't say please and thank you. We do say please and thank you. <laughs> yeah. We just cut it out. Because yeah. I'm usually going, oh, thank you. See, that's my camera hand. Thank you. Do you guys want to see this? Oh, can you give me that, please? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want that, please, because I move the camera way too much. But if you guys don't believe me, I'll give you this. If we get 5,000 uh, subscribers by the end of the year, I will return to London and take an edited kick blast, and you guys can go with us. How does that sound? <laughs> yeah. All right, like and subscribe.